going to download a few things, um, or if you want to, you can. If you, if you don't, you don't have to. But uh, just like if you're going to use Visual Studio or Code Blocks for C++, that's fine. But let's say, for example, you wanted to use a few other things. The text editor that I like to use is Sublime Text. So you could then just download either Windows 64-bit or if you're on 64-bit, and you know you're on 64-bit by go to Start Menu, Control, System Properties, and you can see 64-bit operating system. If you're on the 32-bit, then download this one. But you can just download it, install it, and then when you run it, um, you know, it looks like that. I think that if you have a text file, if you just open it like this, it's going to default to Notepad, which you can change this default to Sublime Text. So now, if I double click on it, it'll. What is this? Uh, I got some. I don't know. Maybe I've got Sublime Text. Window, Parallels Windows is going to enable sharing. Hmm. This is weird. Oh, Sublime Text Mac. I don't want Mac. I want. Uh, Sublime Text Windows. Uh, so I go to my computer, program files, Sublime Text 2, go to the exe on my Windows. That's what I want. I don't want it on my Mac. Okay. Now apply. Now it'll work. Okay. Yeah, I'm running this uh, a virtual machine on my Windows on my Mac. So. I don't like to share files like that. Anyway, um, so let's uh, look at this tool I've got right here. It's called uh, MD5, and we'll open this up. And uh, this is kind of like to check the uniqueness of a file, of any file. It could be an exe, it could be anything. So let's go ahead and go to this uh, thing over here that I created called Spencer. And we see this MD5 is given. So now let's open it up and change it um, and add my last name to it and save it. Now we'll go ahead and open up another instance. Go ahead and run it. Look for it again. Put it in there. And you can see that it's now given me a different MD5 hash because I modified the file. So now if I modify it back to what it was before and then close it, open up a new checker, you can see that it goes back to the original one that I had, 942, 942, and this one is different. So basically that's how they check on the internet to make sure that things have not been tampered with. Because when you download things nowadays, I think that it should be more of a prerequisite for especially open source things to give you a listing of like MD5 hashes. Like if you go to Eclipse, they usually, like if you're going to download, um, you know, something like this, uh, it then takes you to a page and then it gives you... Uh, MD5 checksums. You know, then you can then download it and double click it, and then you can download the file. Once you download the file, you open it up the same way that I did, like that, and then it you just paste in what they gave you and see press verify to make sure that it's the same file. You know, and there have been times that I've actually downloaded things from um, this site, Eclipse, and maybe they forgot to like update the MD5 hash. You know, because they had an update, and anytime you change anything, it's going to change the MD5 hash. So they didn't update it. I wanted to make sure that it wasn't tampered with. Uh, so I emailed them, and then they had to go go on there and you know change it. Uh, but anyway, so now we got through that. Uh, now you know a really good text editor.
and you also know a really good um, you know uh, checker for MD5 hash and SHA ones.